Both history and conventional wisdom hold that Scandinavians and their descendants adorned their bodies with symbols, sigils, and staves. The tattoos conveyed information, each with a specific meaning and importance. So, today we're going to take a look at the meaning and symbolism behind Viking tattoos. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other aspects of Viking life you would like to hear about. Okay, time to settle in for Weird History Presents Ink Master Valhalla. Despite what pop culture tells us, whether or not Vikings had tattoos isn't entirely clear. Which seems weird, right? If there ever was a prime candidate for tattoos, it's a swole bearded raider with an axe. But I guess that also describes every heavy metal guitarist. In fact, there's only one single historical account that even mentions tattooed Vikings. It was written by the Arab chronicler Ahmad ibn Fadlan, who lived from 879 to 960 CE. When he encountered the Rus, Scandinavians in Eastern Europe and Russia, he noted that from the tips of his toes to his neck, each man is tattooed in dark green with designs and so forth. In other words, they look like a bunch of Green Bay Packer fans. Despite the general lack of evidence, however, it is believed that Vikings probably did wear tattoos. These tattoos likely included runic characters of the younger Futhark system, which were prominent during the 9th, 10th, and 11th centuries, and had their origins in the aptly named Elder Futhark. Their meanings can be derived from various magical and mythological manuals assembled between the 12th and 17th centuries, that contained folklore tales, spells, runic symbols, and staves. The Kaltrabok, for example, provides information about old Icelandic magic and is where we can find the closest thing to what a Viking tattoo may have actually looked like. Although, full disclosure, the magic spells do not appear to work. Believe us, we've tried. The term Valknut is a modern creation that means not of those fallen in battle. The symbol itself, three triangles locked together, is ancient. Commonly found on ruined stones and grave goods, the Valknut is considered a symbol of death, like a skull and crossbones, but with more flair. It is often carved and drawn near images of horses and wolves, which are associated with the Norse god Odin. The Vegvizir stave appears in the Huld manuscript of the Koldubruk, accompanied by one line of text which reads, If this sign is carried, one will never lose one's way in storms or bad weather, even if the way is not known. So basically the magical equivalent of a GPS. The word Vegvizir combines two Icelandic terms, Vegur and Vizir. The former means path, while the latter means guide. To be perfectly honest, whether or not Vegvizir was used during the Viking Age isn't clear, but the stave has come to symbolize protection. Elgich is associated with yew trees, but also represents elks, protection, and spirituality. But the coolest thing about this rune is that it's connected to the Valkyria, also known as the Valkyries. Valkyries were warrior women who rode horses, wolves, or boars. Really? Boars? And were responsible for deciding the fate of warriors in battle. They were responsible for carrying some of those warriors off to Freya's afterlife, Folkvange, and others to Odin's afterlife, Valhalla. These mythical figures wore swan feathers, which lends Elgich to a connection with swans as well. Okay, if you've been to see a movie in the past 10 years, you probably know what this one is. Mjolnir, or Thor's hammer, is the magical weapon that can only be wielded by those who are worthy, at least according to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The power of the hammer makes it a tool of destruction, as well as an instrument of blessing, strength, protection, and power and it appears in numerous Scandinavian sources. In the Prose Edda, for example, it's referenced numerous times, including in the poem Himishkveta, which calls Mjolnir the lover of murder. That's a hell of a nickname for a big hammer. The Helm of Awe, which sounds like a particularly impressive beer helmet, holds significant spiritual meaning and power in Norse mythology. Nine versions of it exist, with the Helm of Terror as the most recognizable. Each of the helms serves specific symbolic purposes. One Helm of Awe type, for example, is used to get the affection of a woman. To make it work, the user must draw it on their palm with saliva when meeting the woman in question. 
Kinda sounds like one of those things you need to be a Viking in order to pull off. Other names for Inguch include Ing, Ingwach, and Ingwe, but regardless of spelling, it's linked to the earth and god Ing, who is later called Freyr. The rune corresponds to apple trees, self-heal, which is an edible purple-flowered herb, and the color yellow. In Norse mythology, Ing represented energy, fertility, and peace. His namesake rune similarly indicates these positive attributes, and is sometimes drawn with four diagonal lines extending off its four points. Wreath is linked to oak trees, the herb mugwort, and the color bright red. The rune corresponds to transportation and journeys using a wagon, a chariot, or simply a wheel. Who knows, maybe it also stands for rideshare. Phonetically, it sounds like an R. In terms of deities, the rune is connected to Forsheti, the Norse god of justice and law. That being said, Wreath just looks like a big R, so you might not want to get it as a tattoo unless you are prepared to put up with a lot of people asking you why you're such a big fan of Reebok. The rune Soilo means sun or, put another way, a solar wheel. Also called Sol and Soulo, it symbolizes wholeness and victory. Soilo is associated with junipers, mistletoe, the Norse sun goddess Sol, and the colors white and silver. In Old English, the rune is called Sigil. It looks similar to an S and is likely to make people think you're really into Superman. The rune Ivach means yew tree. As a result, items that derive from yews like bows and arrows are connected to this rune. Ivach has great power in Norse mythology. It symbolizes transition, especially the transition between life and death. Regeneration, longevity, and even immortality also find representation in this rune. Now, about that immortality, is it for the tattoo or the person that wears the tattoo? Gebo, present in the elder Futhark, but not the younger Futhark, is represented with a simple X, so it would be real hard for your tattoo artist to mess this one up. It symbolizes gifts and generosity. As the crossing of two lines, Gebo represents two connecting and exchanging forces. It is linked to Odin and Freya, and is associated with ash and elm trees, wild pansies, and the color dark blue. Bjarken is also called Bjork, so you might not want to get this one unless you're big into Dancer in the Dark. This rune corresponds to birch trees, Lady's Mantle, which is a type of perennial, and the color dark green. The direct connection to nature is found in its symbolic use to indicate the Earth Mother in both positive and negative ways. Birth, death, rebirth, and healing all find meaning with Bjarken, which is basically just a big letter B. The Norse god Tyr is a deity of justice, order, and war. And you know he's a big deal because he literally has a day of the week named in his honor, Tuesday, historically the most orderly and just spot on the calendar. The rune named after him, Tiwach, is similarly associated with these concepts and indicate forces that regulate life, the universe, and everything. Okay, not everything, but it does indicate balance, sacrifice, honor, and higher rationality. Tiwak has associations with oak trees, sage, and the color bright red, and it basically looks like an arrow pointing up. Dagach, or Dagr, is a rune that appears in the Elder Futhark meaning day. In particular, it refers to the light between night and day, dawn and twilight. So in a way, it is the rune of vampire melodrama. Dagach not only symbolizes light, but also balance, polarity, and enlightenment. The rune corresponds to spruce trees, the herb clary sage, the god and goddess Odin and Ostara, and the color light blue, so it's nothing if not versatile. Manach means man or human, but in the larger collective sense of all mankind, not just the mans down the street. The rune symbolizes the self as well as the divine ancestor of all humanity and the link between the heavens and earth. It corresponds to holly and matters, matters being perennial climbing plants, and the color deep red, as well as the gods Odin and Heimdallr. This rune isn't found in the younger Futhark, but when used in the elder Futhark and Old English, it means horse. While it looks like the letter M, it has the phonetic value A, 
which admittedly is a little confusing. This rune symbolizes movement, trust, loyalty, and partnership, which appropriately are all components of the relationship between a rider and their faithful steed. You guys, it's all about communication. Othala represents property, homeland, and one's inborn nature in the Elder Futhark. Not present in the Younger Futhark, its name is Ethel in Old English, with a similar meaning. Because there's a sense of hereditary and ancestral property attached to this rune, it symbolizes personal qualities, clan descent, inheritance, and legacy. This is perhaps why it's linked to the gods Odin and Thor. Othala is also connected to hawthorn trees, the medicinal white flowering plant gold thread, the color deep yellow, and kind of looks like a rudimentary drawing of a fish standing on its fins, which would also be a pretty boss tattoo. Peorth appears only in the Elder Futhark, and is often misrepresented as meaning fate. It's a little more complicated than that. Rather than simply meaning fate, Peorth is also associated with luck, which everyone could use a little of, as well as with cups and vessels used to cast lots. Basically, it's the rune of fate and Yahtzee. Rather than predestination or predeterminism, this rune is better interpreted as the relationship between cause and effect. Peorth also corresponds to beech trees, aconites, which are attractive, often toxic flowering plants, and the color black. Lakar looks like a backward number one and means lake or water. It symbolizes life, energy, growth, collective memory, and psychic powers, and also water. Phonetically, Lakar is akin to the letter L. It also corresponds to willow trees, leeks, and the color dark green. As a rune associated with the leeks, it's also used as a reference to fertility and phallic power, which explains its prevalence on big Jorgensen t-shirts. Wynn is present in the Elder Futhark, but not the Younger Futhark. Symbolically, Wynn represents joy, the emotion, not the dish soap. And while the rune is shaped like a P, it's pronounced with a W sound. The rune is linked to ash trees and the flowering grain flax. In terms of color, yellow is tied to this rune, and both the god Freyr and elves are associated with it. Ish sounds like the letter I and means ice, which makes sense as it looks a little bit like an icicle. It represents movement of matter and energy along a vertical axis. Also, as a benefit of essentially being nothing more than a straight line, it is possibly the easiest tattoo to draw in the history of body art. Because ice was a fundamental part of Norse life, Ish can take on a small or large scale significance. Ice can be underestimated and dangerous, but it also serves to give the soil a quiet rest during winter and insulate the fertile ground for the coming of spring. There you have it. We've given you the necessary tools to dazzle your tattoo artist with trivia the next time you go in to get some ink done. Just make sure you tip them in dollars. Runestones don't spend the same as they used to. So what do you think? Which of these Viking tattoos would you consider getting? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.